<laughs> so um, this is a series that uh, I've, I've looked at uh, off and on for some time and uh, um, thought it might be helpful and, and useful. It's, uh, it's uh, by John Mark Hicks. And you'll see him in a, a video each, uh, each week um, for the next few weeks um, talking about anchor points. Um, you'll hear, hear tonight um, kind of why he's um, qualified is maybe a good word to use or, or, or what about his experience makes, it, uh, makes this something that he's thought about and considered and, and prayed about and, and learned. Um, and um, it, it's about this, this necessity that we all have to have something to dig into and anchor to you know, when things get difficult. Um, and, and he suggests we ought to ground those anchor points in who God is. So we're going to talk a lot about uh, five different anchor points that he has come to. And he want, he's going to talk to us about uh, God loves, God listens, God understands, God reigns, and God wins. Um, the, sounds like a PDF. It does sound like it does. Sounds, it sounds, yeah, it's even five days. It's a five, good five day. PDF. It does. It sounds like a good BBS. Maybe we can make one. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, uh, uh, so, so these are the, the, the things that he says will help us get through these, these difficult times in our lives. Um, and, um, and so that's just by way of introduction. Um, and, and we'll talk more about those things over the next several weeks. Um, one of the things we can talk about as we before we play this video, or, or at least something I want to like just raise to you, not something you necessarily need to, to answer uh, out loud unless you want to, and that's fine. And that's, that's the other thing, uh, talking about difficulties and talking about struggles, it's not easy for us sometimes. So um, nobody's going to put you on the spot and say, you know, you have to <laughs> talk about a struggle that you're going through, you have to talk about. But on the other hand, if at any point you want to, uh, one of the things that, that he's going to talk about tonight is the importance sometimes of talking about those those struggles that we go through and, and being able to articulate them and and get them out and and what what we learn even from uh from beginning to talk about those things and uh we were sort of talking earlier uh mom i think asked about the the difficulties david was going through in psalm 119 and we know about some of those difficulties. We know about some of those struggles, but one of the things that we talked about was how David wasn't shy about, uh, you know, talking about those struggles and putting them out there and saying, this is, this is what I've been going through as he wrote his, these Psalms. Um, so I, I, while I don't want to put anybody on the spot, nobody's going to be put on the spot. Uh, if at some point you want to talk about some struggles that you're having, having in your life, I, I think, this is an excellent class, an excellent, I mean, anytime you want to do that is fine, but this is a, a, an excellent opportunity to, opportunity to do that. So some of us probably will be sharing some of those things as we go. And, um, and as you feel comfortable, that's, that's great. We, we want you to do that. So just think about what, you know, what are you carrying around with you? You know, <laughs> what's, what's in your heart? What, what are you struggling with? What's unresolved? What, you know, what, what kind of, Pain do you have? And I think one of the things that we tend to do, um, those of us like me who haven't gone through a lot of difficult things and a lot of suffering, we tend to sort of minimize the things that we do struggle with. Well, it's not as bad as, you know, da, da, da. Um, but it's really not comparative. It's really, it's, it's, it's not that we compare with one another. It, it's, if there's a burden that you have, if there's a struggle that you're going through, that's real to you and that matters to you. And even though you might think it's insignificant compared to what someone else is going through. That doesn't mean it's not real and it's not difficult. So just some things to sort of think about as we, uh, as we go. Um, so um, this first video uh, is, he, he entitles it, My Story. And he's gonna talk about um, some of the struggles he's been through and, um, 
and refer a little bit to what he's learned um, from that and how he's dealt with it. Um, but it really is a way of sort of introducing the topic. So just keep that in mind. And then we'll look together at Psalm 119 uh, that we, uh, we looked at um, today. Maybe, maybe you had a chance to look at it today. So, uh, Josh, if you would go ahead and play that video, I need to, I need to so, meet myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stories are important. It's how we get to know each other. When we meet someone for the first time, we spend a lot of time telling our stories. We ask about our marriages, or we ask about where we went to college, and where we grew up, and what our work is, and we start to tell stories. Stories are also ways in which we deal with our grief. Stories are the way in which we share our lives with each other. And this is particularly true for fellow strugglers. We need to hear each other's stories. But what everyone needs to understand is not all the stories are the same. Not all the stories have the same trauma, same problems, same struggles, and same suffering. We each have different stories because our paths on the sea are very different. But here's what I want everyone to hear. At least this is true for me. It's very difficult for me to hear what other people want to speak into my life when they have no clue about how my life played out or have no clue about how suffering played out in my life. When someone who has not suffered tries to speak into my life and interpret what is going on and what God is doing, I shut down because they have no credibility with me. They haven't suffered. They haven't walked the path. So where I want to begin with you in this series is I want to tell you my story. But I want you to know that some of the hard things I might say and some of the difficult things that are written in the book, that you might scratch your head and say, wow, really, he believes that? They come from a person who's been in the trenches. They come from a person who knows what it's like to suffer. And those are the kind of stories we listen to. I know from my own experience and the experience of others that sufferers listen to sufferers. They don't listen to people who haven't suffered. And so where I need to begin with you is I need to tell you my story so that you might have some way of sitting with me and we can listen to each other. We each have a story. I want to share mine with you. And it would be good for you to share your story with someone. Share it with God. Or find a person that you are close to to share it with. Or share it in the group. I'm honored to have the opportunity to share my story with you. I was married when I was 19. Yeah, I know, young. But I'd already graduated from college. And my fiancé had graduated from college. So it's time to get married. She was 22, I was 19. And we had already decided what we wanted to do with our lives. We wanted to be missionaries in Germany. We had prepared ourselves. In fact, over the next three years, till I was 22, I pursued a master's degree and then another master's degree, preparing myself for Europe and Sheila preparing herself for Europe as well. We were ready to go. We had a sponsoring church, but we did have one, one problem. We'd already had a miscarriage in our family. And Sheila had a condition called scoliosis of the spine. And this condition caused her a lot of pain. And the doctors told us that it would be very difficult, if not impossible, for her to carry a child full term. And so we decided to have surgery. Sheila would undergo surgery to correct that curvature and give her the capacity 
to have children. And so that surgery was full of hope, relief of pain, have children, to be able then to, to go and do the mission of God as we had imagined it. We thought it was a good thing to do. And we prayed for health and for our future. Ten days after the surgery, while she's recovering at home, Sheila died of an embolism. I didn't know what to do with that. I'd never even been to a funeral except one. I'd never been to a funeral of a close person, of close family friend. First death in our family, our immediate family at least. I did not know what to do with that. I was so distraught on the day of the funeral, they had to carry me out of the out of the church. And I was so angry with God. I felt betrayed. Like I'd been set up. God, we only wanted to serve you. Our whole life was planned for you. Or at least so we thought. Maybe it really wasn't. Maybe something else was going on. Maybe that was something I needed to learn. I don't still understand it all. But I do know that I was angry. Over time, I was able to regain some, some balance in life and I remarried. She already had a child and so I married into a, a new family and I adopted Ashley. And then we had two more children, Joshua and Rachel. And Joshua, we, we named him Joshua because we wanted him to be a leader among God's people. Uh, we thought about Jesus, but, you know, that's a little too much. I mean, Joshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus, so we, we just kind of slipped that one in there. But we really did want to give him a vision that he would be a leader among God's people. And we wanted to give Rachel a vision of her beauty in the way we thought of her as a beautiful girl. But Joshua didn't develop well normally. Joshua never could say his ABCs, never could color between the lines. Always hyperactive. Got kicked out of kindergarten. Baptist kindergarten, by the way. He got kicked out for his hyperactivity and some of the things he did. He loved to smash things. And we knew something was wrong. In fact, we thought, we're going to visit this kid in San Quentin for the rest of our life. We didn't know what was wrong. We went to psychologists, psychiatrists, pediatricians, and then one day we were at a church that I was preaching at, just visiting preaching, I'm not the regular preacher, and a nurse was visiting as well at that church. She took one look at Joshua and said, you need to take him to a pediatric neurologist. Within a week we were sitting in an office along with the geneticist. And they told us Joshua was not going to get better. He had a terminal condition. And over the next 10 years, we watched Joshua slowly die. He lost his mobility. He lost his ability to speak. And he died at the age of 16. My family didn't survive that death, like many other families. We divorced. Part of that's certainly my fault. I was emotionally distant. I didn't know how to deal with my grief. Remember I told you I was carried out of the church? When I was carried out of the church, I was so embarrassed because when we came out of the church, the whole town was, seems like the whole town was outside the church. And I was so embarrassed. And I said, I will never be embarrassed again. I didn't cry at my son's funeral. And it caught up with me. And about 12 years ago, I finally learned how to grieve. 
and I redid my son's funeral in my home with close friends. And I bawled like a baby. Nobody's story is perfect. Nobody's story is filled with good. There's always some chaos and disorder. There's always some struggle. But that's my story. And that is why I hope you'll walk with me through the rest of the story. We all have a loss story. And we all have a faith story. Our loss stories are very different, no doubt. Some very traumatic, some very tragic, some, some about the loss of a job or the divorce or death. Or We all have a loss story there. And we all have a faith story. Now, our faith story can be really different. Some have a faith story that is a struggle, a doubt, a question. Some have a faith story that's very deep and strong and lifelong. But it doesn't matter. We all have a lost story and we all have a faith story. And it's important to tell our stories. I told you my story, and it helps me to tell the story. I, I don't know if this is your experience or not, but my experience is that when I tell my lost story, it doesn't make the pain go away, but it does give me clarity on my path. And in particularly when I'm sharing it with my community, when I'm sharing it with people who love me. I may know that God loves me, but really, I only know when God loves me when other people love me. I need, I need God in the flesh, you might say. I need God with skin on. And when you hear my story, it encourages me and helps me. So it's really important in community that we each tell our stories. That we tell our stories of loss and we tell our struggles with faith. And we see how those two intertwine. It's time to tell your story. And the more you tell your story, the more I think you'll understand about what God is doing in your life. The more I tell my story, it seems like, the more I understand. Though my understanding is always limited and certainly never enough. But you help me with that when you listen to my story. And you will help each other when you listen to each other's stories. So try that on precise. Take a moment and let everybody tell their story. Because God's listening. And God loves you. So, um, yeah, uh, I, uh, anybody have comments or, or thoughts on the, the video right up, right up front? Anything you want to sort of mention or talk about? Any comments you want to make? What did you think of his statement about how um, sufferers don't listen to people who haven't suffered? I found that true, you know. I, I've, I've I've found that um, when you're talking you know, about somebody who's got an addiction, they look they listen better. People who have an addiction listen better to people who have gone through that suffering. People who have you know lost someone dear to them listen you know listen better when they know that someone is talking to them who has shared in that. I think that's probably human nature, and that's not to say that. You have to have those same experiences necessarily. I think it's just to say that that we we tend to listen better when we think people can relate to us and can identify with us, which makes all the sense in the world. I think. Um, other thoughts. I, I guess. Um, I push back a little bit with that thought that only if you've suffered to the degree someone else has suffered, that you can only listen then. 
Um, I'm not sure if I agree with that. But what I do believe is if I'm suffering and, you, and you're listening, it helps me, whether mm -hmm. you've been through the suffering or not. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I don't know, I, I would prefer to see it that way because I just, mm -hmm. it's like saying, I don't understand how to parent because I don't have kids or I don't know how to help. I, I don't, I just find that faulty in some way to say, if I haven't gone through it, I can't empathize or I can't listen, but I understand the point he's making but I'm trying to work that out to see if I totally agree with it. Because I've been, pain, I've been in pain and whether a person has gone through what I've gone through or not, um, if they're listening and really wanna be there, that seems to help me. More than someone who's been through it and trying to tell me that they've gone through it in some regards. Because yeah. basically I believe if you're in pain, empathy and compassion is shown through presence and heart more than present in words. So I don't know, I'm just, I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I don't necessarily think it's wrong for him. That's his experience, but I don't know if I would paint that as something uh, definite. And, and I, I kind of put those words in his mouth, I think with my, my uh, illustration of, of addiction, because he didn't really say that. What he said is sufferers listen to other sufferers. And so he was telling his story, I think, to let those of us who are suffering know that he has suffered. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he was going that way with it um, yeah. and, and intending that and intending that more with it because he did later say exactly what you said, right? That it helps to be heard. It helps to, to, mm -hmm. to, to, to have somebody listen. And, and I think we've all experienced that as well. Uh, even, even if you're like me and you tend to, you know, shut up about things, uh, um, even 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 we know <laughs> that that sometimes it helps to to talk. Um, so yeah, I, um, I, I, but I, I I think you're right, and I, I think I, I think certainly certainly empathy goes a long way, right? And and caring enough to hear and sit still and listen while somebody without without trying to say here's how to solve it, here's you know, here's yes. what you do, at least not right at the beginning, um, to just hear about what people are going through uh, it is a good thing. I mean, that's exactly what I wanted to say because um, this is something that I've always, I don't know, we have like this church group, uh, the Church of Christ, like the whole of Cameroon, in fact, it's the whole world. So we have this WhatsApp group. So they talk a lot, of, a lot about stuff like this, where it's like, if you're not married, you can't talk about marriage because you don't know mm -hmm. anything about marriage. And some of us, we are having a disagreement all the time. Some people are, are of the opinion that it doesn't matter whether you're married or not, you can still talk about marriage. Other people mm -hmm. are like, no, you can't understand marriage unless you're married. Same like people who have kids and those who don't have kids. But personally, I don't feel like it's, it's right. Um, I think it depends on the reaction. It depends on the reaction of the person I'm talking to. So if I'm going through something that you haven't experienced, what you're gonna say is gonna determine if um, I'm gonna feel okay or not. So it's, if you keep saying, oh, I understand, I under you don't understand anything because you <laughs> haven't been through what, yeah. So mm -hmm. like you said, right, just sit and listen. I'd rather someone just listen, um, just give me that listening ear and just be there for me rather than trying to tell me how to fix it or act like they understand. Whereas I know they haven't been through what I've been through. I mean, two people can go through addiction, but their experiences are still different. So mm -hmm. we don't experience things the same. So sometimes it's even difficult for you to understand another addict, even though you've been an addict, because okay. we are two different human beings and we don't feel pain the same. We don't, I mean, we don't take stuff the same. So it's kind of complicated. I feel like it just depends from person to person. That's mm -hmm. my opinion. Yeah, thank you. Good points. Good points. Uh, let's look at Psalm 119 uh, just for a few minutes here. Um, we'll start in verse 65. Um, and I, I'm not necessarily going to zero in on every, every one of these 23 verses or whatever it is. Um, but um, I, I, 
kind of get the big picture here of what's what's going on in, in Psalm 119. Um, begins, do good to your servant according to your word, Lord. Teach me knowledge and good judgment, for I trust your commands. And then this, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. You are good, and what you do is good. Teach me your decrees. Though the arrogant have smeared me with lies, I keep your precepts with all my heart. Uh, their, their hearts are callous and unfeeling, but I delight in your law. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. Um, as you go down, verse, 70, verse 75, I know, Lord, that your laws are righteous and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Uh, those three sentiments are, are, the, are the ones that I, I find real interesting in light of what we're talking about. Um, it was good for me to be afflicted. Verse 71, verse 67, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. Verse 75, I know, Lord, that your laws are righteous and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Uh, what do you think about those, those, those verses? How, how, do you, how do you respond to those? Um, what do you think about affliction being good, uh, as he as he says uh, in verse uh, uh, seventy one? Uh, what, what do you think about how God, in faithfulness, has afflicted him <laughs> in verse seventy five, uh, or about how he learns uh, to obey God's word through the affliction that he suffers? Uh, before that affliction, he went astray. Uh, what are your thoughts? Very disciplined. My, I, I remember when I was a child growing up, my parents would discipline me. And back in Cameroon, they didn't just talk, they do actually. <laughs> so there was a time my father was uh, making me a chain. And he made a statement that I'm going to with you and you have a mark. Each time you look at that mark, you remember this day. <laughs> So you're not gonna do it again. Yeah, yeah. So and and that's that stuck in my head for a long time. And each time I remember, I said, "Oh, I mean, I, I will avoid doing what I did." So. Yeah, the man is like, "Wow, wow." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, so yeah, I always, I, she, she does the stuff because I always say it. So and I remember that even even as we are going through our life, there's some times where we need some something. To always remember the pinpoint bookmark that area of your life where you can always remember that all right. Uh, and sometimes God can use your struggles, your challenges to bring you back, you know, to, to correct you, to remind you, as the 71 is saying, that the affliction you can, you can learn from it. So that's what I mean. Yeah. And I don't think, yeah, I don't think you have to look at it as you know, in punishment for what you've done, God brings this affliction on you. I think it has to do with. We learn <laughs> through those struggles sometimes. We learn to obey. We learn to trust. We learn to uh, do good when we don't feel like it. We, you know, we, we learn things through that, those sorts of struggles that we don't necessarily learn when things are easy and, yeah. and quiet. And I think that's more the way he's going with this. Not, you know, you know, God beat me over the head with his law because I disobeyed him, but that he that through those struggles that we go through, we, we do learn and we do grow to know God better and and come to terms with some things in our lives. He, I, I like what John Mark talked about, uh, uh, you know, how he said a couple of times, I don't understand it all yet. You know, that, that's a good place to be, right? That you're 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 still figuring it out. You're still figuring out what happened and why and, and how and and how your faith is tangled up in it. Uh, but I, I, I can, I think I, I think I understand what he's getting at with, with this idea that I obey you now because, uh, because of this affliction that I've gone through. I'm, I'm more likely to. Is it, is it right though to say that God afflicts us? Like with Job, it, God allowed him to be afflicted. And a lot of the things that happen to us, um, 
are not because of anything that we did that was wrong. That it's like, you know, God made the, the world and set things in motion and things kind of just happen, you know, like the people living down in Florida, hurricanes happen and depending on where you live, uh, you might be in the path of one and, you know, you might be off by a couple miles or something and, and escape the whole thing. So it's, it's just, it's a kind of a, just a random thing a lot of times. Now, sometimes we're afflicted because we do something stupid or, or sinful. But a lot of times we have no control over what happens to us. I, that's, a, that's a really good question to ask. Is, is, is it right? Is it fair to say that God afflicted me or that, that when I went through this, God afflicted me? God has done this. God has let this happen. John just, Mark talks about being angry at God when his first wife died. Just by uh, you know allowing the 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 world to, to go on the way yeah. it is, maybe it is God. Because I, I, we know that God could stop it if, I don't know, if, if he wanted to is the right <laughs> one. <laughs> he chose to. If he, if he chose to. Yeah. And I think, that's, I think that's where David is in this psalm, right? It's this radical belief that God is in control of these things. I mean, he because he's talking about arrogant people who are wronging him and who are smearing him with lies. And, you know, his affliction is these, these people who uh, slander him and who have made his life miserable and attacked him and are taking every effort to, to cut his legs out from under him. This is the affliction he has. I don't think he necessarily said, thinks God, those people came directly from God. But he, he does talk about affliction as he says, um, in faithfulness, you have afflicted me, <laughs> you know. So, so I, I mean, I, I, think, I, I think you're right that, that not everything that happens to us happens because God said, I'm going to send a hurricane on, you know, uh, you know on them today. I, you know, it's just, it's time for them to have a hurricane. Uh, but certainly we believe that, God is in control of some things. And so in that sense, maybe we, we, we recognize that um, at least through his permissive will, right? God allows. My dad used to tell me the same thing. When I was growing up, I had so many health challenges. I still do so. But uh, he, he got to one point, he started praying. We had fasting sessions and I would go back and I would come back, see problems, always complaining at them. At one point, he started telling me that maybe God wants me to learn something. And he used to always say, I had so much anger. I still do too, sometimes. <laughs> he said, I had so much, so much anger. And I used to grow up when I was growing up. Uh, I was going up too fast. With the way I thought about things, the way I always said I wanted my life to be, and he told me sometimes he used to scare him. Mm -hmm. uh, he felt like if I went that way, I would just continue going and I would end up really bad. Mm -hmm. And so maybe he kept praying to God and God had to put me, <laughs> <laughs> put me in a position where I would stay down, learn to be patient, learn to listen, and learn to not be so angry. Mm -hmm. And we, it took some time, I started learning those things. Then and the problems are reducing, but then some of those things are still there. <laughs> and I believe that to an extent. I started telling myself that that could be that could be it. Maybe I had to learn something, maybe I had to learn something. I don't know. And it's still with me up to today. And I still feel like mm -hmm. I'm learning still, I still have to learn more things. So, As do we all, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that I, I think that as people of faith, when we go through struggles, one of the natural reactions is to look to God and say, why? People who don't have faith 
don't go through that, right? People who don't believe in God or don't care anything about God or don't believe God loves them, they don't have that struggle. That, that's I think that's where this 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 struggle that we feel comes from that you're articulating, Diane, because one of the first things we do is we we go to God and we say, why? Right? I, mean, I don't think I'm alone, and he you know he, he can talk about that in the video. Um, and then, and that's why I think we feel sometimes why we sometimes ask the question that way. You know, why did you let this happen? Why did you do this to me? Why didn't you do this? You know, um, and and I think those are you know are fair, reasonable questions for people of faith because we're not really, for the most part, now there's I'm sure exceptions, but I don't think for the most part we're really questioning God. We're we're wanting to understand. Mm -hmm. something that might be not understandable at least not right now um but but there's something about it that wants to understand why did we you know when it is you know i mean think about that situation that he described he's a, a young guy she's young they're you know, they're they're wanting to have a family they're they're preparing to go do mission work um why does that happen I mean, that's a, that's a question I would have certainly asked, right? You know, uh, not that I think I deserve anything from God because I'm doing X, Y, or Z with my life, but I think I would, I would want to know that. I would want to understand. Other comments, other thoughts? Yeah, I was thinking. Uh, oh, no, there's a mat. Go ahead, go ahead. The thing like that is, does it help? And the answer is not really. Does it does what help? What's the reason why? Even if God would tell us exactly, it's not gonna make it any easier to go through whatever it is. I think it would help me sometimes. I'm gonna push back. I think it would help me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think it would help me if I could understand. Yes, I thought so too. I, I think I maybe, maybe I'm wrong, man. I mean I, I get what you're saying, but I it. You still have to but go through it. You know, there's a purpose for it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, imagine. I'm, I'm thinking the difference of, uh, you know, thinking about Kathy's cousin. You know, that this little kid going through these treatments, not mm -hmm. understanding what in the world this is. Whereas an adult, if you understand why you're going through it, maybe you still got to suffer it, but at least you know that there's there's a reason for it. There's something that's accomplishing. You know, and 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 so. I don't know. I, I, I get what you're saying. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. But, uh, there are some famous examples where people are just torn up inside by what's happening, and they know exactly why it's happening. It doesn't make it easier. Jesus in the garden is one. Mm -hmm. Peter, at the moment of his betrayal, knows exactly why what's happening. And it still tears yeah. him up. Right? Yeah. We, we think it would be somehow comforting and say, well, okay, that's fine, then I can go through it. The people of Israel knew exactly why they were in captivity. God had been telling them for centuries what was going to happen. That didn't make it any easier. They were still surprised when it finally did happen. I, I guess we don't know that it didn't make it any easier because they did know. They did know that, that the reason. So I, I don't know. I, other thoughts? I think I think somebody, I think Colette want to say something? Yeah. Um, I think this ties in, but this is what I was looking at, verse 71. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. Yeah. And good night. I think about, here's one of a short story of something I experienced. I lived in Zimbabwe for a while. And when I was there, it was the, one of the hardest times in my life because I was there as a missionary, but I was wavering in my faith. And I... I'd cry and go, I don't know if I really believe in you, God. Why am I here? I want to go home. And it wasn't even about going home because I'd been there two, three years in different parts of South Africa. But at this, stint, this time when I was in Zimbabwe, it was very, very difficult and with my faith. And he's talking about faith stories. This was a faith story that I lacked faith. It wasn't that I had faith. And yet the expectation of what I should be doing every day was still upon me and to be responsible and the work ethic and all of that. It was just very difficult. And thank God I got through it, but that was one of the difficult times in my life. That moves me, this verse still moves me. 
Um, when I work with teens, they would come to my office crying about something. It could be a breakup in their 13. So, you know, kind of looked at that like, your 13 stop. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I can't say that. So I, I cry with them, I feel with them, but then I say something like, I'm glad you're going through this. And they stop crying and go, what do you mean? Why are you glad I'm going through this? That's not fair. And I go, because now you know how this feels. Remember how this feels so you can learn from it. And what does it say in 71? That you can learn your decrees, but that we can learn how to be human and have compassion and know when someone hurts what that feels like. And that's been true with, gosh, not just teens. I work with people that make two times a, a six figures that I'm working with right now. And I just said this to a young man and I said, remember how this feels to be overlooked and the position goes to someone else. And he's like, well, I'm, I'm kind to those who report to me. I said, that's not the message I'm saying. I know you are, you're a great person. I'm saying, remember how it feels because sometimes we forget how it feels and we don't treat people with the compassion and with the concern of how that feels or to sit at a table by yourself. And I think I have to remember what it is to waver in faith when I meet a young person or old person that's saying, I don't believe in God and I'm ready to, to pack it up and move on. And I, I know how that feels. Isn't it? Right. Yeah. And that's kind of what John Mark and you started out with. We know how that feels, but we learn from it to show the compassion. We learn from it to slow our roll and not be judgmental. Like I said, with the 13 or 16 year old kid, I'm like a oh, boyfriend, how old are you? You know, <laughs> you have thousands of boyfriends maybe. <laughs> just, just to let them cry and go, that must be hard. But to want them to learn from it. And I love that verse so that I might learn your decrees and the compassion is of God and love is of God and patience is of God. So I can learn how to be that. And I think affliction can teach us these things for ourselves. Yes, it's for others, but for ourselves, how to be that. Yeah. So this is, this is great. Good, good point. Good, good, good points. Thank you. Yeah, I'm here. Wait, Jacob. Yeah. Uh, I think this is a very good topic that you brought in. To be frank with you, I like sharing story myself. I like sharing story. Uh, even every congregation that I go, I always share my story for them to know who I am and how I begin and when I am right now. And then when you go to this Psalm um, 19, the 71, as our sister was saying, that sometimes the thing will not reflect in your life quickly for you to understand what God is doing. It will take a time before you know that, ah, where God has brought me and where he picked me from, it's all okay. It's good that it come by that nature. You see, uh, some of us, like it, we, we struggle from very a young age, very young age. So mm -hmm. those things has eaten our mind a lot because to me like this, I lost my father in a very young age. I was eight years when I lost my father. And I'm uh, the elder of uh, four kids that my father has. So you can see that the others, they are just a little ones. And my father was a military man. He has an accident and then we lost him. Because of that, I have to live with my uncle in the forest, a two man forest. If I say two man forest, that means there is only a two hearts. Uh, the building, the, how we put the building in the forest is like uh, you just plant, uh, mount the wood and then uh, put some raffia fronts on it and then some put a mat on it and then you make it as a building. That you people live there wow. and be strong, yeah. And then doing some farming. And if you are very somebody who is so strong, you can be somebody who want to be hunting. So I was 13 years when I was using a single bag to go to hunting. In the night, I used to take touch line to go to hunting in the night in the forest. Mm -hmm. So all these things 
always, those stories in my life always let me cry quickly. Excuse me to say, it let me cry quickly. If you are telling your story, if I see that my story fall in your story, you will see me that I'm crying. So my wife always blame me. Why if somebody is telling his or her story, then you begin to cry and say, I feel for her because yeah. I know what she's saying or he is saying. You've been there. I feel yeah. for her. I feel yeah. for her. Mm -hmm. So I have a long story, a very long story in my life. If I'm, as I'm standing here right now, I don't work short. I don't work short because if you see, from my foot up to my knees, you can see uh, what do we call it? Uh, I don't know how to put it. Uh, scars. Scars, scars, wound, these kind of things, a lot about my skin. All because of the way I live in mm -hmm. a tender age in forests. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In forests. So sometimes if I tell a church my story, Yours, you lost yours. You not bring yours again. You just keep it. So when you bring this topic and that we are coming to begin this topic to tell a story, I was just thinking, how am I going to do to tell my story? For people to hear my story from infancy up to where I am right now. But when you read the book of uh, Psalm 19, uh, 119 verse 71, as you said, Mm -hmm. Today, I'm thanking God in my life. They're reflecting that he has brought to my life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I was saying, I always say that if God didn't move in from my grandparents to live with my uncle, maybe I won't be a Christian. Mm -hmm. I won't be a Christian. Because my, grandpa uh, my grandfather was a uh, fetish priest. Mm -hmm. Maybe... I will be, I mean, so passionate to those things. I didn't but that. to live with my uncle, my uncle leave me. Well, let me say we are living in Chicago, maybe foreign side in Chicago. And my uncle leave me in Chicago and went to maybe North Carolina for more than two years. And I was living in that forest alone. <laughs> I was living in that forest alone. Mm -hmm. I was 13 years, six months, when I go to bush in the, in the afternoon, hunting, uh, what do you call it, monkey, and I saw a tiger hunting antelope. And he got the antelope in front of me, and the tiger is looking at me. I was looking at the tiger. Yikes. Yes. I was looking at the tiger, and he was looking at me. I was holding my gun, but I can't shoot because I was, I mean, I was very panicked. Yeah. And the tiger was looking at me. I, I'm not, I'm not moving, but he's looking at me. I was looking at him, and then at the time, he just left the antelope there and then and left. He didn't take the antelope, which by my surprise, and I did not move my aim to go and take pick the. And the meat that he, the, no, 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 I just turned my back and come home. When I came home and tell the story to the elders that this is what I saw this afternoon, they didn't believe me. But there was <laughs> one person among them who said, no, this story that this young boy is telling us is very wonderful. And I can see that this boy is not walking alone. He's a human being walking alone, but he's not walking alone. Mm -hmm. And this man hunt that tiger and go and kill that tiger and the area that I show him, in eight days, he went and killed that, this tiger. Before the people got to believe that the story that I'm saying is mm -hmm. true. I have a lot of story in my own life. Like if I share with you, it's quite pathetic in my life. But for being a Christian today, if I stand in every puppet that I share my story and people begin, some will be crying and say that, you passed through all these things. Yes, I passed through all these things. See my skin, see who I begin, see from my stomach, see what happened. I fall in the fire, the fire was burning, a bush fire was burning, I fall in the fire, see my stomach. You mm -hmm. see the mark there, my stomach. Yeah, 
I would like to continue a little later. I will, I will share the rest with you. Yeah, later. that's, that's very Thank you yeah. very much. I think, I Thank think that's you. really good. I appreciate you, you, you wanting to talk about that because I, yeah. I think that's the kind of thing that helps us. You know, it, it, it does bless us, as he talked about. And, and it's, good for, it's good for us to talk about things that have happened and things that we've gone through. It's good for us to hear what one another has gone through because we don't always talk about that. We don't, we don't grieve with each other sometimes because we don't know yeah. what, what we should grieve about. And, and we don't lament well because we don't know what everybody's gone through. I want to, as we wind up, I want to re just remind you though of, of, of the, 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 the uh, verse, uh, verse 75. I know Lord that your laws are righteous righteous and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me and, and I think that's really beautiful because it reminds us that even if we receive from the Lord or he allows us to receive difficulty and hardship God is still faithful right God is is still the faithful one who loves us and who is compassionate and who's you know, as, the, the, as Jeremiah says in Lamentations, his compassions never fail. They're new every morning. Um, there's always that faithfulness with God. And, and so the, the, the struggles that we go through, we can trust that God is always faithful in those. And that's, I think, some of the, the anchor points we'll be talking about. Um, but I, I just think that's an important note to sort of sound in this, that that as we talk about our stories, as we talk about the things that we've gone through that God has allowed to happen in our lives, good and bad, uh, God is faithful. That's our baseline as Christians. God is faithful. And we can trust that. And we can put our confidence in God's faithfulness. So thank you very much for your, your thoughts, your, your comments. Um, I look forward, Jacob, I look forward to hearing some more from you and from anybody else that wants to share. Uh, I look forward to hearing those stories. Maybe we'll even you know, take some time to um, let people just tell their stories uh, uh, as, as they would like to. Um, and I think that would be a really good thing uh, if, if anybody wants to do that. So, um, so looking forward to, to, to studying this talking about this with you and hearing your continued uh, comments and, and, uh, and thoughts.